أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح للأمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين صلوات ربي عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعنا معهم إلى يوم الدين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم إن زلزلة الساعة شيء عظيم يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارى وما هم بسكارى ولكن عذاب الله شديد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد All praise is due to Allah the most compassionate the most merciful Whoever Allah guides will never be misguided, and whoever Allah misguides will never be guided. And I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad والسلام, is his servant and messenger. Now, today's topic, inshallah, we're going to start with the story, and then we're going to try to link it to the message that we want to get out of it, inshallah. Throughout the Islamic history, there are many monumental events that had a huge uh, impact on Islam and the, re and, the, and the journey of Islam to what we have today. And one of those is the Battle of Al-Khandaq or the Battle of Trenches. And that battle was one of the toughest events that the Muslims had faced until that point. Why was that? The Battle of Khandaq had very severe conditions. It was cold during that time. There was low supplies, low food, low water. People were afraid. And just to put things in perspective, the Ahzab, which is the, the group of Quraysh and all the different tribes that Quraysh collected to defeat Islam and put an end to Islam and kill the Prophet and the companions, 
they collected 10,000 warriors, while the Muslims only had 3,000. Not only that, but they also made agreements with the tribes surrounding Medina to betray the treaty that they had with the Prophet ﷺ, and so Medina was exposed. You know, you have Quraysh attacking from one side, and you had the Jewish tribes from the back betraying the Muslims. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the situation of the Muslims in Surah Al-Ihzab and he says إِذْ جَاءُوكُمْ مِنْ فَوْقِكُمْ وَمِنْ أَسْفَلَ مِنْكُمْ وَإِذْ زَاغَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرُ وَتَظُنُّونَ بِاللَّهِ الظُّنُونَ هُنَالِكَ بِتُلِيَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ وَزُلْزِلُوا زِلْزَالًا شَدِيدًا Remember when they came at you from east and west when your eyes grew wild in horror and your hearts jumped into your throats and you entertained conflicting thoughts about Allah then and there the believers were put to the test and were violently shaken and so you can imagine the scene and the setting of this battle and the Muslims and the Prophet ﷺ before you know Quraysh came and the army came he sat with the Sahaba and he did mashura he talked to them you know what do you think we should do and Sayyidina Salman al farisi he said, back in Persia, whenever anyone attacks us, he would build a trench. And so that's what they did. And they built the trench. Now, after building the trench, that meant that the army was outside of Medina, and the Muslims were protected behind the trench. And anyone comes close to the trench, they would shoot them with arrows. But how long can the Muslims go for, uh, for, for this situation? As we said, supplies are short in Medina. You will have to go out at some point and resupply and get more. And that's where the story, where the hero of the story today comes in play, inshallah. And that hero's name is Naim ibn Mas'ud. And he was from the tribe of Ghatafan. Now, Quraysh had multiple tribes with them, and one of them was Ghatafan. And Naim, what was unique about him is he had accepted Islam secretly and the tribes and the Ahzab did not know that he became Muslim and he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he told him, order me. Tell me what to do. How can I help? And so the Prophet ﷺ tells him, you know, between us, you're one man. But on the other side, try to disrupt between them Try to separate between them as much as you can, as war is deception. And Naim heard this and went right away. So first, Naim also had a good reputation between most of the tribes. And so he used this reputation to help the Muslims. So he started with Bani Quraidah, which was one of the tribes, that, uh, one of the Jewish tribes that surrounded Medina. And so he goes to them and he said, O oh, Bani Quraidah, you know how kind I am to you, you know my relationship with you. They said, yes, we trust you, we've never heard anything bad about you. And so he goes and tells them, well, you know, Quraysh and Ghatfan and the other tribes, they came from far, they left their houses, and they came here to Medina to fight the Prophet and his companions. But you... Bani Quraidah, you have your houses, you have your wealth, you have your families here. And so, if the battle is going well, then Quraysh and the Ahzab will continue fighting and they'll seek victory. But if things go south and Al Ahzab are not winning the fight, it's simple for them. They'll leave and go back. And what are you going to be left with? You're going to be left with fighting Muhammad and his companions. And you won't be able to defeat them. And remember, your houses and your items are here. And uh, he tells them, and I have a suggestion for you. He says, in order to ensure that Quraysh does not backstab you and leaves right away, why don't you take you know, a guarantee from them? Take a couple of their honored people, keep them as well hostages or a guarantee, and once the fight is over, return them. 
They said, you know, that's very well said, that's a very good opinion. And uh, they thought about it and that's what they were going to do. Then Naim went to Quraysh and he went to Abu Sufyan. And he told him that, you know, something came to mind and I just wanted to share just as an advice because I like you guys. And he goes and says, you know, my reputation amongst you and, you know, I wouldn't lie and that stuff. And they said, yes, you're a very reputable person and everything. And he said um, that I heard that Bani Quraydah and the Jewish tribes, they actually felt bad, uh, you know, betraying the Prophet ﷺ and the treaty in place. And they actually sent a message to the Prophet that we are sorry for what we did, we apologize, and you know what, to make things good and return things to how they were, we're gonna bring a couple of the honored people of Quraysh and Ghatafan, and we're gonna give them to you, and you can do whatever you want with them. And so Abu Sufyan started thinking about that. And, and then Naim again proposed a suggestion. And so he said, if Bani Quraidah come to you and say what we just said, don't send people with them because that's what they're going to do with them, right? And so Abu Sufyan, he was like, yes, very well said. And how could they do that? And, and so on. Then Naim goes to his own tribe, Qatafan, uh, and he tells them the same thing he told Quraysh, that Bani Quraydah, they backstabbed you, and they want to uh, fix things with the Prophet والسلام, and if they come and ask for people to keep as hostages, don't do it, don't fight with them, and so on. And so he did this trick between all three, and after that, uh, what he did say came into reality. Quraysh, uh, Bani Quraida approached Quraysh and Ghatafan and said, you know, we don't trust that, you know, if the fight doesn't go well, you guys will just escape and leave us. And so we just want a couple of your honored people so we can keep us hostage just to make sure, you know, you stay and fight with us. And then Quraysh and Ghatafan remembered what Naim said, right? And so they said, no, we won't send someone with you because you might kill them or give them to Muhammad because that's the narration they know. That's what they know. And so they kept disputing and these guys, well, we won't fight with you anymore. Well, we're not going to defend you anymore. And subhanAllah, that was... That caused separation between the big Ahzab, the big group that was there to defeat the Muslims. Now they were divided. Bani Quraidah and, and, and the, the, the Jewish tribes, they were separated. Ghatafan and, and Quraysh also had disputes. And, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on top of that, sends the winds, very severe winds and cold winds that destroys all the tents and destroys all the things and the supplies that the Ahzab had when camping around. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings defeat to Quraysh and victory to the Muslims through the effort of the Muslims and the patience and through Naim and through Allah's mercy and wisdom. Now, the focus of the point is Sayyidina Naeem, right? He could have just joined the other side, fought with the Muslims, and we don't know what would have happened, he would have won or, he, you know, but he realized he has a key spot and he has a key uh, figure and position. And he went to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, how can I help? What can I do? And he took initiative. And subhanAllah, one single man separated between an army of 10,000. So, Sayyidina Naeem, 
he, you know, he got the great honor and, and the support of the Muslims through what he was good at. He used the skills and the position and the right time and the right place to support the Muslims where they needed the most. His reputation, his, his uh, uh, mischief to, to dispute between them. And, uh, and the Prophet ﷺ knew where to use him as well. And so these are the traits of a good leader and these are the traits of a good follower as well. And I wanted to connect that to a verse in Surah Hud where Sayyidina Hud says قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِن كُنْتُ عَلَى بَيِّنَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّي وَرَزَقَنِي مِنْهُ رِزْقًا حَسَنًا وَمَا أُرِيدُ أَنْ أُخَالِفَكُمْ إِلَى مَا أَنْهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ إِنْ أُرِيدُ إِلَّا الْإِصْلَاحَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُ وَمَا تَوْفِيقِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ تَوْكَلْتُ إِلَيْهِ مُنِيب Sayyidina Shaib says he said, O oh my people, consider if I stand on a clear proof from my Lord, and He has blessed me with a good provision from Him. I do not want to do what I am forbidding you from. I only intend to reform to the best of my ability. My, my success comes only through Allah, in Him I trust, and to Him I return. And the key focus here is, in أُرِيدُ إِلَّا الْإِصْلَاحَ مَا استطعت. Right? I only want to fix and reform as much as I can. And this should be a, a slogan for all of us in this life. There's so much fixing to do in this life. There's so much wrong that needs to be fixed. And the Prophet ﷺ says, مَنْ رَأَى مِنْكُمْ مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرُهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْطَطِعَ فَبِلِسَانِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْطَطِعَ فَبِقَلْبِهِ وَذَلِكَ أَطَعْفُ الْإِيمَانِ Whoever sees a wrong doing, uh, then he should try to fix it with his hand, if not, then with his tongue, if not, then with his heart. And that's the weakest form of Iman. But the point being, mashallah, I see a lot of different demographics, different people, that we all do different things. We all are specialized in something, whether we're doing it for work, whether we're studying something, we all are doing something special. But the question is, why are we doing it? What are we doing it for? And have we ever tried connecting it to support the Ummah, to support our brothers and sisters, to support Islam? And I'm not telling you the answer is clear, because it's not. We might be doing whatever for work, right? We might have a hard skill or technical skill, you know? And we're doing this narrow thing but try to think out of the box. Look at how whatever you do, whatever you're good at, how can you tie it to this religion? Even if the time is not now, it's okay. Maybe down the line, the need is going to come. But you have to ensure that, okay, what I'm doing, I, I see a potential vision of connecting it to Islam. And with that, Strive to be the best at what you do. Because as an ummah, we need people who are good at everything. We need, and that's how the Sahaba were. Right? Sahaba, uh, in, in, in the time of the Prophet, والسلام, you had the people who were great at, pol uh, at politics, like Sayyidina Amr ibn al-As. You had the businessmen, Sayyidina Afman ibn Affan and Abdurrahman ibn Awf. Uh, you had the poets who basically worked as the media. Uh, you had uh, the people responsible for the army, like Sayyidina Khalid. Uh, you had all different types of people. And that's what the Ummah needs in, in order to keep going up. And in order to come back strong, inshaAllah. And the Prophet ﷺ says in, a, in, a, in another hadith, اِعْمَلُوا فَكُلُّ مُيَسَّرٌ لِمَا خُلِقَ لَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given all of us different talents, different skills, and we might be better at some things than others, and others are better than us in some things. And this is Allah's decree, and Allah's distribution. And even the non-Muslims, all human beings, they all have skills and talents and attributes. But what makes us different from others, and what makes someone different than others, is what they use this for. 
is it? You know, for our worldly gain, money, fame, and whatnot, or are we using it for the sake of Allah and to benefit the Ummah? أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه الحمد لله وحده والصلاة على من لا نبي بعده وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا عبده ورسوله and سبحان الله one verse that if we truly understand it and truly remember it all the time, we're going to try to connect everything we do in our life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Say, O Prophet, surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and death are all for Allah, Lord of all worlds. And that's how our life should be. Whether you're doing something, you know, work, school, whether you're doing ibadah, whether you're doing something for fun, everything, as long as the intention is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will be rewarded for every single second that you are living for. And that's how our life should be. And that's how, what we should learn from what we've seen in the past 11 months happening in Palestine everyone just shifted their focus to how can I benefit you know our bro my brothers and sisters over there and sure we're here we have a different role but the same point we're the same human beings same skills same attributes but look at how can you benefit at the right time and at the right place you know if you are good with people and you have good social skills Consider doing a da'wah training and talking people into da'wah. If, uh, if you're interested in history and you're good at storytelling, then learn about the seerah and teach others, right? Teach the younger kids. If, uh, if you're good at, you know, social media and graphics designing and, and that stuff, well, there's so many posts and, and so many things that we can, content, Islamic content that we can put out, out there and it will be a salah qajari for you. And so, look at yourself. Look at what Allah has distinguished you with. And the skills that you have, whether soft or hard skills. And look at, okay, take initiative. We need to take initiative. Look at, what can I do in order to help the Muslims? Whether in the masjid, within your family, within the community. If you can even go broader, even better. But we need to do something. We need to take initiative. Because if it's not me and you, then who is it going to be? And so I ask Allah to use us and not replace us. Allahumma istikhdimna wa la tistabdilna. Allahumma wafiqna li ma tuhibba wa tarda. Allahumma arzuqna al-tawfiq wa al-ikhlas wa al-qubul. Allahumma ahdina li arshadi amrina. Allahumma iftah alayna fuduh al-arifin. Wa iftah lana min khazaini ilmika wa fadlika wa karamika ya akram al-akramin. اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من سخطك والنار اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم أسكن الفردوس الأعلى من الجنة اللهم ارزقنا حسن الخاتمة والشهادة في سبيلك اللهم ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا وعاف مبتلانا وارفع البلاء عنا يا رب العالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وإنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على